Hi, welcome to Naresh Shetty. This is Kishore, and today we are going to continue the inheritance concept. In last class, we are we are discussing about inheritance. Inheritance means what? It is the mechanism of deriving a class from existing class. It is the mechanism of deriving a class from existing class. Here, existing class is called what? Base class or super class, and the newly created class is called what? derived or subclass and here one more important thing is we can derive a new class from more than one base class or one class also and we can derive number of classes from one base class also that means we can derive the classes from multiple classes or multiple path also okay next why we need the inheritance the advantage of inheritance is first one is the reusability second one is the extensibility that means what we can use the old class in new class creation means what uh, the old class properties are passed to new class due to this what happens we are going to use the same old class properties in new class without redeclaration which is called reusability next one the new class is having what the old class properties and its own properties which is called extensibility that's why inheritance provides the concept of reusability and extensibility now already have given how to derive a new class first class new class means derived class colon which is called inheritance operator later visibility mode like public private protected and later old class and properties it is the last class we have discussed now when inheritance is conducted what happens okay when inheritance is happen what happens inside okay here the point is when inheritance is conducted then only the memory is allocated for base class data members also that means what uh, here when the derived class object when the derived class object is created then only memory is allocated for base class data members and derived class members okay for example here class x is there and here i n t a comma b are there next some data members and member functions now i am going to declare one more class class y okay here it is the x class and it is having two integer data members that means here four bytes memory is there next class y it is called what inheritance operator and next okay public mode class x now here it is the what base class and it is the what derived class now it is also having some data members like cd now some now watch this here already ab is having 4 bytes memory and cd also require 4 bytes memory later now i am going to declare the object of derived class in main void main next uh, derived class name is what for example y and here y space dr now dr is the what object okay now dr is the object name now here what happens now it is the stack and dr is the object now it contains the data members a b c d that's why total how many bytes 8 bytes 2 2 2 2 that's why here whenever the derived class object is created okay then the memory is allocated for base class members also that's why derived class size is derived class object size is sum of base class members plus derived class members okay that's why here derived class size is what derived class object size is sum of base class members and derived class members like this okay. for example if the class is not having any data member then what happens automatically the size will become one byte okay remember this 
when an empty class is created, empty class means without any data member, a class is declared automatically that class uh, size will become 1 by 8. Okay? It is how the derivation is conducted and how the memory is allocated. Next, now the point is how the members are okay, used in derived classes based on derivation mode. Okay? The members availability in derived class is depended on the derivation mode means what? Base class, it is the base class it is the derived class. Now, the base class member availability or accessibility is depended on this uh, public or private or protected visibility label. Now, I will show you when public mode is there what happens, private mode is there what happens and protected mode what happens. Okay? Class base okay. and here private member x and public member y and protected some z. Just watch it. It is the base class and now the base class is having three types of data members. One is private data member, another one is public data member, another one is protected data member. Now, I am going to derive two classes. Class okay, derived one class derived one from public base. Here watch it carefully. Here derived one is the new derived class declared in public mode. Now what happens? Okay. When a class is derived in public mode, all the public members of all the public members of base class will become public. That is why here public means what? Why? That means, in public area y is available. Next, protected members of base class will become once again protected in derived class. That is why protected z. Okay. That is why here important point is when a class is derived in public derivation mode or visibility mode, the base class public members will become public members of derived class and protected members will become protected in derived class also. Okay? It is the important thing. Next, suppose private derivation class derived to private I am going to use and here private is the default one with or without there is no difference. Okay? Now, private base. Now, what happens? Another class I am going to derive, derived to, which is derived from same base class. Now, what happens? Here, public members of base class will become private members of derived class. That is why here private, now this public member will become private, that means x. Next, not only that one, okay, here sorry, y and next, here protected member of base class also will become private member of a derived class. It is the problem. Okay? That is why here the important point is what? Okay? Whenever the class is derived in public mode, the public members okay, will become public of derived class, protected members will become protected members of derived class. Next, when the class is derived in private mode, public members and protected members will become private members of a derived class. It is the thing. And now, here one important point is that what about the private members? See this, here x, there is no, no x, there is no x. Means, uh, in public or private derivation, in public or private derivation, the derivation is what it may be, private members of base class are not directly available to the derived class. Okay? Remember this, in public or private, both in public or private derivation modes, the private members of base class are not available in derived class. That means, they are not participating in inheritance okay? because of data hiding concept. We know that in data hiding what happens? Only the member functions of 
that class can access the private data. Here same thing is happened. Now, x is the what private data that is why it is visible only to the member functions of that class only that is why it is not available in further class means we are directly not able to access the private data of uh, any base class in any derivation mode that means indirectly the meaning is what private members are not going to participate in inheritance they should be accessed only through the only through the base class member functions ok it is the main concept of how the data members availability is ok in derived class that means when public is used what happens when private is used what happens ok i am going to show you what are the terms what are the keywords we are going to use what are the words we are going to use in inheritance ok first uh, generally the main class is called uh, base or super class it is the class created and it is called derived class or which is also called subclass ok it is the base or super class and it is the derived or subclass for example from this class one more class is derived now it will become derived or once again subclass there is no doubt at all but uh, in this situation this class will become the what base that is why it is called intermediate base now it is the intermediate base class next here this class is this class directly that is why now it is the direct base class ok it is the direct base class and but here it is having properties of this one that means this one also having the properties of this one that means it is also participated indirectly in creation of derived class that is why now it is called indirect base class ok that is why here this class is derived from directly from this class that is why it is a direct base class and this class also created indirectly from this class but it is not directly participating that is why it is called indirect base class and here it is the base or super class and here it is the derived or subclass but until it is deriving another class when a class is derived from this class this class will become intermediate base class it is what are the terms we are going to use in inheritance concept ok ok now what kind of inheritance models are available in C++ based on base classes derived classes levels inheritance is divided into several types ok I mean sir, here five types of uh, inheritance models are introduced in C++ one is single level one is what single level inheritance second one is multi level and third one is multiple and fourth one is what hybrid and fifth one is a ok actually here hybrid is which, uh, which is also called multi path and hierarchical inheritance ok like this based on number of uh, base or derived classes and levels ok the inheritance is divided into five types one is single level inheritance second one multi level inheritance third one is multiple inheritance fourth one hybrid or multi path inheritance fifth one is hierarchical inheritance what is single level inheritance now what is called single level inheritance ok in a session I am going to give what is a single level inheritance. Mm -hmm.